Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Votes Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. I indicated to you before, we've been talking about the whole issue of Planned Parenthood. It's been sort of like a taboo. You know, no one can talk about it, if you will. This is just a one-sided issue. You either for it, if not that, you can't be, you, you can't be against it. And a lot of times it's, it's identified and attributed to the fact that it's a Republican issue. And they're all about aborting, aborting a life. And uh, for, ye- for years that I have been doing my show, uh, I've heard about it. And a lot of times it was a women issues, and a lot, a lot of times what I would say would be, okay, uh, I'm really not. I'm really, that's a woman's issue. It's not a. It's not my issue aspect of it. So I stayed out of the the deal. But then as time went, I, I think I remembered interviewing several folks through, through the years about the whole issue of abortion. Uh, B.J. I don't know if you know her name. They were named B.J. Harris, and uh, several other folks we talked about. The whole issue of abortion, but it was a woman issue, and she came on and we talked about it, and you know, but she was an African American woman, and she was very concerned about the abortion of uh, of uh, of black of blacks as far as uh, young black women, if you will, and uh, so but anyway, through the years I did that piece, but then as time went on, um, I had the opportunity to interview a gentleman that's sitting here with me now, who's, who's going to be my guest, Bill Dis. Uh, at the time, he was working for Portland Public Public Schools. And uh, Bill and I talked chat a little bit. I interviewed him just like a, a regular interview aspect of it. Uh, really, not as much as I wanted to, but the fact of the matter is, we interviewed, and he taught me some things about it. But then, uh, through the years and whatever, it's always become an issue during election time. It's always been an issue during election time. And being a Lincoln Republican, and I, I've, I've made this point to you, you folks out there in, in video land, if you for years, that um, I'm a Lincoln Republican for obvious reason. I feel that the history of African American, the slavery and racism, this, that, and the other, all tends to have generated itself through those years in the 1800s, if you will, through Lincoln, i.e., the slavery aspect. It was Republicans, if you will, the right to vote and all this other stuff, and this, that. So the idea was, my push was to put it in the classroom because it is our history, and then to educate us, to educate us, so we then all of a sudden, there are black Americans would be inclusive, and we wouldn't have this issue that we have today. I would say that, and I've always said this, that had Lincoln not been shot, I think we wouldn't be talking about race today because the, the next president would have made sure that it became part of that platform and on and on and on. And we wouldn't have this issue today. But we still have that issue today. And I'm still saying, I'm still using the point and making the point that we should talk about this issue. It is our history and uh, we sh- it should be in the classroom. But we're not talking about this piece. And the same thing in all due respect, now that I've learned about the whole issue of, uh, well, not all of it, but I'm, I'm learning this issue about, uh, about aborting, the, the whole issue of abortion. And then I, now I've, I've learned a little bit more about Roe versus Wade. And I've talked to some women about the whole issue of Roe versus Wade. And it was sort of like an addition, if you will, to the pill. And I said, well, what's that all about? And then they told me about that piece and said, if we had not Roe versus Wade been in this issue, we wouldn't be, a, in all due respect, aborting the number of, of young people uh, uh, life in, 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 our, in this particular time. And it's really a sad note. But anyway, well, I'm sort of continuing on. I plan to continue educating you about this issue. And hopefully I can get the other side to hopefully come on to Planned Parenthood. It's like the focal point, if you will, on this whole issue of, of the abortion, i.e. getting, i.e. taxpayers' monies, if you will, to do that. And, uh, and just a little quick note on that piece there. It says if they've got a sole source contract, a sole source contract to abort abort uh, uh, a, a life, if you will, $500 million, the, the, the point is being made. My point is that I've been a contract and a businessman aspect of In order to be a sole source contract, tractor, you have to be the only identity and you have to go through a process, a bidding process. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it should not be a, a situation. It should be, if, if it's going to be a bidding process, that's the way it should be. I mean, there's the health issues of a woman and then there's the abortion aspect. There's two sides of this piece. I am, I am pro help for the woman aspect of it, but I'm, I've got some major concern about the abortion issue. And with all the technology and the sophistication that we have in this country, we should be able to say one way or the other, it's either right 
or it's wrong, but we don't want to talk about it. We're going to talk about it here on the Oregon Voters Digest, and we're going to do it until we get to the end of the deal. And joining me in this point, we're going to start off with, again, we got Bill Diaz here who's with us. And Bill has a history, and we're going to go back in time and basically give Bill the opportunity. We're going to use, we're going to use you, Bill. We're going, to give, we're going to get Bill to give us an origin of this whole piece, how he got involved, where he was working, and bring him right on up to the date. And I think it's going to be very interesting. I've had some little spotted involvement during that particular time. But the fact, I think it's going to be very valuable, especially here in Oregon, more specifically here in, in the Portland metropolitan area, i.e. in the black community, in the black community on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard today. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. So just stay with us. We're going to spend some time. Bill, welcome. Welcome. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. How's your family? Everyone's fine. He's a family man. I know a very staunch family man. And I want to thank them for allowing you to, you know, especially your wife and your family, for allowing you to come here. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of work. Okay, fine. So why don't we just start off with you? I'll just go on and why don't you introduce yourself? Okay. And, okay. Well, I'm, uh, as you mentioned, I'm Bill Diss. I've, uh, I've done uh, engineering and teaching over the years. I graduated from college in the 70s and, and uh, <clears throat> started off full-time teaching. And when the fathers hired me, and then I worked 21 years in industry. From because, Oregon, are you? Oh, no, I was in Colorado. Colorado, okay. And during that time, uh, the 21 years of working in industry, I, I never gave up, gave up teaching. I used to teach part-time at University of Colorado mm -hmm. and then different um, uh, community college systems. And then also did a lot of teaching um, within different churches, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, good. Yeah. So now and you're, then, you're uh, in Oregon. How do yeah, you do? So then, uh, yeah, so I was working working for a small company at the time in the late 80s and 87 and uh, Menor Graphics um, who's a pretty prominent company in uh, Oregon uh, bought our company we're just a little company just 10 of us or so and then um, we came up here and uh, um, and that's how I got to, to Oregon. Is that you got to Oregon? So I got to Oregon, so it was a job change. A job mm -hmm. change, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So when did was so what, how do you get in this employment with the Portland Public Schools? Well, then, then from uh, working at Mentor Graphics, uh, um, they had some pretty good years there in the late '80s and the '90s. <laughs> things started to go down a little bit, and they had a big layoff in '91, and was able to escape that one. They had a big layoff in '92, was well, able to yeah. escape that one, but '93 <laughs> that layoff got me. Um, and uh, so then I went to go work for a, a, a small company, and um, then that small company ended up getting bought by a company, and then uh, those people started another small company, so I joined them again, and then I was uh, lastly working at Intel mm. in 2001, and that was kind of when the dot com, uh, not the boom, but the bust happened. Yeah, okay, and, right, right. And so got laid off from, from Intel there. Um, and at that time, I had been teaching at the community college, and I just started to do more of it. Portland Public uh, Portland? Uh, Portland Community College, okay. but I also had been doing some teaching at, uh, well, I, I guess it happened after that. I also taught some at Mount Hood and also Clark, too. And that was doing the D. Bernardus area, right? Was that? D. D. Bernardus. John D. D. Bernardus, the guy who basically started up the community college piece. Oh, I'm, I'm not D. sure. Okay. Okay. Not, don't, okay. Don't know. Right. Yeah, okay. So, um, but the, uh, <clears throat> and then while I was at Portland Community College in 2002, um, uh, I was there teaching some classes that summer, and one of the fellows came to me, one of the fellow math teachers, he said, you know, I just interviewed for a job that has your name all over it. And I said, well, what would that be? He says, well, Benson High School, have you heard of it? I go, possibly, I said, I'm not sure. <laughs> and he goes, I really think that job's you. And I said, and it was one of those, as I, I always like to call them, my wife does green eggs and ham. Yeah, yeah. I said, you know, that would probably be the last thing I'd want to do. But boy, I had an interview within a couple days, and uh, it's 7.30 in the morning. I remember just walking in there and, and just looking at the grandeur of the place. Mm -hmm. And, and had that affirmation from the Almighty, you know, this is, mm -hmm. this is where you're supposed to be. Right. Got a nice warm greeting from the principal and from the vice principal and, the, um, and then the fellow who, who actually also worked at Intel, not when I was there, another engineer who was teaching at Benson. Hmm. Benson has, um, at the time, had quite a few people who had worked in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and because a big part of Benson uh, still is to some extent, but a big part of it was to do the technical education. Besides, you know, students taking their English and history and, mm -hmm. and mathematics, but uh, 
to have other courses. So I ended up getting a position at Benson teaching computer science hmm. um, to juniors and seniors and teaching some math then. And then I started to also teach freshman electric. And that was probably the class I had the most hmm. was freshman electric. Where What was the caliber of the students during that particular time? Um, th there's a wide range. Wide range, okay. You know, there's okay. some who could not get there early enough in the morning. Okay. And I remember sometimes leaving after meetings at 7 or 8 at night and turning off a light down in one of the shops and one of the kids would say, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and it's like, what are you doing here? Well, I just, I just had to get this working. Yeah, yeah. And then some, of course, were there because the parents knew it was a good school and, and, and at least at first they weren't that concerned about making things or fixing things. Mm -hmm. And some of them would even come right out and say that, I don't want to be here and I don't care about making things or fixing things or, mm -hmm. and what, but a lot of them did see it what was interesting. Would you consider that was the, the voc ed, mm -hmm. if you will, of the, of the district? If, if well, it, it was because some... Yeah. Um, uh, it's a one of a kind, so to speak. It, it did. Uh, when uh, Mr. Simon Benson started the school around 100 years ago, mm -hmm. um, in fact, it might even be just right around, there might be a little over, a little under 100 years, but he always thought that that was really good for, uh, at that time, boys, he called it, because it was a boys' school, you okay. know, 100 years ago. It was it was good for their their uh, their mind mind and soul I think he mm -hmm. said to be doing things with their hands. Mm -hmm. Now the other public schools over time um, have also offered some uh, so vocational classes. Sometimes they call them professional technical classes or career technical classes. Mm -hmm. uh, but Benson uh, typically has been and still is the one that offers mm -hmm. the most courses. But you know Jefferson has a couple technical classes and so does Franklin. Mm -hmm. uh, but Benson uh, Benson builds a house, which a lot of people don't realize, every mm -hmm. two years. Wow. Okay? Wow. Um, and then they use the proceeds of that to buy more land and material and and do another one. And a couple of the homes uh, weren't, aren't that far from here, mm -hmm. just over um, off of um, Mallory. I was okay. very impressed with Benson yeah. because as I came yeah. in as a Marine recruiter and I recruited yes. out of Benson because okay. they could pass the test and they yes. were very technical. And we were looking mm -hmm. for those who could make right. it, it very, right. un, 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 unlike the yeah. other schools within the district. Well, it, it was heaven. I, I loved it. it uh, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> um, I was able to also, one of the jobs I had, I worked at Synopsys mm -hmm. before I worked at Intel and I was able to secure a lot of donations from mm -hmm. Synopsys mm -hmm. for Benson. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so we were able to get a lot of computers. Any reason why not? Why, 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 why didn't he expand this in the entire district? Because that's why I, I came from a school. Uh, I came from a background such. Oh, uh, that that could be a loaded yeah, question. I guess <laughs> I, I have my I have my opinions on it. Yeah. Um, and and I guess I should say. I mean, this is a this this is a show where, you know, all know all opinions you. are welcome. That's right. But, that's uh, right. That's right. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I mentioned how Simon Benson said that that was, you know, a blessing or something of that sort. We have the placard up front in Benson. Mm -hmm. We're working with our hands. And my grandmother would always say, you know, manual labor is good for the soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's just something really wholesome about kids doing technical things. Uh, uh, I mean, we don't have some papers from when my kids were little, but we have their projects, you know, up, up in uh, my wife has them on her dresser there. But um, unfortunately, I think there's some things with the district of not really having a lot of deep love for humans and the whole mind and soul and body. You, may, you know what I mean? Yeah, saying yeah, the whole human. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think somewhat they're involved with, with the, uh, which, is, which is part of Planned Parenthood, yeah. the, the eugenics, you know, more, to get more of a fit race. And I, so mm -hmm. I think... I think some of them, not all of them by yeah. means, I think we have some very good administrators mm -hmm. in the district, but I think some of them do look at look look down upon on um, technical education, which is really sad but nice because uh, we had we had someone come in and talk to us, you know, and she says, what you know what's the first thing you do in the morning? You know you're not like reading a book. She right. goes, let's be honest, what's the first thing you do in the morning? And a lot of people say, oh we used to go to the bathroom. She goes, that's right. And who, who, who puts bathrooms together? You know, are they PhDs? No, you know, they're plumbers. You know, what's the next thing you do in the morning? And then you, oh, you know, nice. and when you, you get off in the car. So the point is, is that technical education, I think is really good. Um, and, and I think it should be in more schools. And, um, would you, sometimes would you, they'll say it's a money issue, yeah, but, right, right, but, right. but, 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 
they they bring in new programs mm -hmm. a lot in schools and you know take out all the math books they actually bring trucks to them bring in all the so they bring in these new programs every mm -hmm. few years that cost a lot of money mm -hmm. and i think if they would really um enhance the programs at benson and other schools they will find students do better mm -hmm. and i can speak for myself mm -hmm. when i um, I mean, I liked I liked math when I was in high school. I started to like it a lot, and, um, and uh, I bought a car, you know, at the end of my senior year, like a lot of young mm -hmm, men, mm -hmm. and worked, you know, day and night. Worked in the gas station, filling cars in the, or excuse me, in the wrong way. In the day, I was trimming trees, and night, I was filling the mm -hmm, filling the mm -hmm, gas in the cars, and was able to get. You know, and back in the late in, in, the early, in the early 70s this was a lot of money get a thousand dollars that summer mm -hmm. and bought a car and it didn't start the next day mm -hmm. i mean that's <laughs> as, as one of my kids at benson he told me how to say it nicer a piece of history yes yeah, a right, piece right. of history right, like right, right 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 and and so but, but as i start to really learn more about fixing cars and yeah, yeah. at that time i only knew how to put in gas and oil yeah, i yeah. actually start to do much more mm -hmm. a lot better in my math mm -hmm. and and chemistry and what well, think you. about what you've been yeah. saying all along it's really i don't respect my <sighs> if i would just define what what an education an education would be with so sort of like uh, mm -hmm. vocation is sort of like the bricks and mortar mm -hmm. of an education yes because if you got the physical aspect of you know yeah. you, you all of a sudden now i've got to be able to read right the math you know as you oh, say about yes. the auto like, like yeah. auto mechanic if you yes. will breaking down the end you've got you've got physics in there you've oh, got, you do you got geometry uh -huh. you've got you know just on and on and on oh you do uh, in fact our um um you know, I can't say enough about the fellow teachers I worked mm -hmm. with there. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, I looked at them as my brothers and sisters. Yes. But, but the electric teacher uh, would, would, uh, the kids would sometimes come down from their algebra two class and say, oh, "I hate trig," or, yeah, right, right. or "I don't understand." Yeah, right, he goes, right. "Well, you know, actually, we've been using it to do yes. the bends and pipes." Yes. They go, "Have yes. we really?" Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and and and, and thing, things of that sort, right? Yes. And, yes. and like you mentioned, the automotive, you know, psi. Oh, uh, hey. You know pounds per square inch and the hydraulics and um uh, you know that the hydraulics uses Bernoulli, Bernoulli's yeah, yeah, principle yeah, and yeah. everything oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well hey look that's more that, that, yes yeah, so we could talk about get, technical we, education for that. years but yes. now, now you've got an opportunity <laughs> to meet the man i mean this is that's his background those are some of the things that he was doing and he's gotten down to this point mm -hmm. now let's get into this with, whole issue with a planned parent okay so how do you get into this so i start to work at at benson in 2002 so i was in my um, fifth year of education there was the 2006-2007 school year and on February 25th of 2007 I got an email from a, a lady um, who lives near um, Salem very very nice lady her name's uh, well her organization is called Voice of Catholics Advocating Life mm -hmm. and I was on her email group and just like a lot of us are in a lot of email groups and you know and sometimes I read about things and say well gee you know that's too bad that's happening but that one Sunday afternoon, it was hmm. probably almost like around this time, I got an email that said that um, that they they were going to have a meeting up at the uh, Northeast uh, Community Center Neighborhoods, which is in a little building off of King mm -hmm. um, uh, Grade School, right there off of 7th and Alberta. That's Portland, Northeast Portland. Northeast Portland, yes, yeah, for people know. And it's just, just so hard to say, but... Um, I remember looking at that message and saying, oh my God, those are my kids. Mm -hmm. Because you know, a lot of people know uh, Planned Parenthood for abortion, mm -hmm. um, and rightly so, they have about 40% of the abortion business now mm -hmm. in the country. And they've killed more babies than Hitler killed Jews in World War II. Mm -hmm. But the other part they don't know is just the graphic sexual education they give to kids. Mm -hmm. And um, so we had a meeting on February 27th, that Tuesday, and, and I went up to it, and um, <clears throat> there was pastors from um, three or four different churches and uh, some other people from the community. Local. Uh, lo <laughs> yes, they're all, all very local. Um, and um, I remember saying, well, you know, I'll, I'll kind of get you some brochures. I mean, it was... It, I had never done anything of that sort before. Um, uh, well, I guess that's not entirely true, but um, I had done some stuff within church groups where a group of us would go out and pray by an abortion center. But to go out in the public like that to, to that was cer certainly um, a new thing. And um, um, it, was, it was a bit scary. And I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll get you some brochures. 
and things of that sort, kind of, you know, limited. Mm -hmm. right, right. And then I remember the next week or something when the pastor's calling me and saying, could you call this other pastor and tell him such and such? Mm -hmm. And then I remember it's one of those times in quiet prayer where I was there, well, Lord, I, I only have to kind of do a little bit here, don't I? And he says, no, no, I need you to, I need you to step it up. And, mm -hmm. And it's the same thing I tell a lot of students who think, well, I'm only an average student. And I tell them, no, no, you can be an A student. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and no, you can make that project. You can do much more than that. And so basically the Lord was telling me what mm -hmm. I tell those little kids, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, I needed to step it up. So um, <clears throat> things happened pretty quickly then. So that was at the end of February. So in the middle of March... There was the uh, PDC had a hearing on it. That's Portland Development Commission. Portland yeah. Development the city Commission. Of Portland, right? Yes, and I guess to backtrack a little bit, the reason we had the meeting at the Northeast Coalition Neighborhoods is because there was a young lady there, who went to church really near here again in Northeast Portland, Immaculate Heart Church. Mm -hmm. It's a predominantly black parish and it's a Catholic and, church. A Catholic church, and and they were just going to try to slide it in, mm -hmm. but she came across a piece of paper. Slide that, in with slide what in? Well, well, the 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 Planned Parenthood. The Planned Parenthood. Oh, oh yes, okay. So yes. She, she was representing the Planned Parenthood. No, no, she wasn't. No, okay. she she saw that paper come across, in the uh, Northeast C uh, Community Center. Okay. You know how okay. they have um, Portland's divided up, and we have the Irving Irving mm -hmm. Irving Center. We have Boys Elliot. We have um, um, uh, what what can I think of some of them now? Uh, we have the Alameda neighborhood and 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 near here's the king neighborhood mm -hmm. and you have the northeast coalition of neighborhoods which actually encompasses a lot of those groups i just mentioned okay. so she was working there and saw that so she told her pastor at at immaculate heart mm -hmm. and then he told the deacon the deacon was the one who told carolyn who sent out the email to people she thought who would want to maybe help or she might have sent out to her whole group i don't mm -hmm. know um so so in march we have a meeting and um uh, um, you could tell Mark, Mark Rosenbaum, who was the PDC commissioner, was pretty, pretty, um, pretty upset that there was anyone there from the other side. Um, the the PDC employees were like hugging the guy from Planned Parenthood. They were all it's almost like little kids at Christmas, you hmm. know, you know, just all googly eyed and this mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. And the guy from Planned Parenthood said. Oh, PDC's been so wonderful. They're doing this and that. And then a few of us got the chance. So I sat by Pastor um, um, W.G. Hardy from, uh, Pastor from Highland. Hardy. Yes. Hardy. Um, very, very devout family the father, neighborhood. The father of this, uh, the son that's, that's pastoring the church now, right? Um, father. It is. Well, yeah. And, and, uh, a and he, uh, W.G. came from a big family. Most of them are quite active in these different churches around right. here. Right. Um, in fact, uh, W.G. Hardy, his, his church has grown a lot, yes. and right now they're they're over on 76 in and, Gleason. And his son is basically the pastor there now. Well, um, W.G.'s son yeah, is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. How you about know that? that? Yeah, he's okay, there. Okay, so, yeah, I guess, you know, it's just my son's married and having children now, so yeah, just forget how time flies. <laughs> but anyhow, um, um, but I, I sat with him, and we both spoke, and so did some other um, people, and... Uh, Ms. Uh, Pastor Hardy made a really good point. You know, he said, you know, the, you say, um, you know, abortion is just a small part of your business, you know. Um, but, I, you know, I guess in that sense, you know, uh, killing Jews was a small part of Hitler's business. Mm -hmm. I mean, he kind of helped rebuild Germany and mm -hmm. put in a highway system, improve the rail, rail, railroads. But, you know, that was just, quotes, a small part of mm -hmm. his business. But Pastor Hardy mentioned, you know, well, what, um, you know, who are these people who are getting aborted? And. He mentioned, you know, they would be the, would be the blacks and the Hispanics and what have you, and so he focused on the abortion piece. Um, I went ahead and read from Planned Parenthood's website. Uh, it was called Teenwire.com. Mm -hmm. Read from a word from word, and Mark Rosenbaum told me to stop. Now I have a few minutes. We're all out of a few minutes, and at that time, I, I, um, I mean, I was kind of shaking just being up there because I wasn't yeah, used right, to. Right doing public testimony, and I should have said, no, excuse me, you know, I need my time. But he said I couldn't read that. Hmm. And I go, excuse me, sir, th this, is, this is the organization you're supporting, you know? And he goes, well, that stuff's not helping. And, you know, I had to guess. And because when I worked with some of my good administrators at school, they always wanted me to be very frank on a referral mm -hmm. of what happened mm -hmm. so they could tell parents, 
you know, not that a kid was just um, kind of messing with a girl. I had to say, mm -hmm. you know, what was he was doing, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so, so Mark Rosenbaum, you know, could not take the truth, you know, of it. And then he got really upset with me. Then he got um, almost kind of like purple in the face and said, he says, well, I'm not, so, I'm not supporting any organization. I'm just transferring property, you know. And, and uh, you know, if you're, if you're transferring property, obviously, you're, you know, you're supporting the person. So <clears throat> um, we tried to, to get in to see Mark Rosenbaum, people from... Um, uh, we were trying to form a group, and we finally formed it that was called Precious Children of Portland. He would not see us, nor would any of the PDC commissioners. Um, but, you know, they would see the Planned Parenthood people. There was no hmm. trouble with that. So fast forward just the next month, and there was another hearing in April. And uh, um, where um, w and there was quite a few people, and more people actually testified against Planned Parenthood. And... Um, um, and one of the ladies showed one of the books that Planned Parenthood uses, that, you know, with the sex ed for little kids. You know, it has full frontal nudity, it has little kids masturbating and what. And she said, um, um, you know, this is just terrible, they're using this. And Charles Wilhite made a joke about it, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, it made a joke about porn. And then Mark Rosenbaum laughed. Well, needless to say, Mark Rosenbaum, um, John Mullis, Sal Cadre, uh, and Mark, let's see, Mark Rosenbaum, Charles Wilhite, John Mollis, and Sal Cadre, the four commissioners. There's one other commissioner, and she, Lisa, was one lady. She had the guts to say, you know, it looks like people in the community really don't want this, and especially the thing about abortion. She says, you know, if Planned Parenthood was that concerned, they wouldn't have to do abortions. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they could just set up quotes, mm -hmm. as they call it, women's health. Mm -hmm. So she voted against it. The other four voted for it. Now, Sal Cadre, for example, okay, said, oh, it was just a hard decision, right? But at the same time, that year, he gives a nice, big, fat donation to Planned Parenthood, wow. okay? So, uh, you know, those four of them were just in love with it. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I can't say like and that's an opinion. Now, at that yeah. time, was Planned Parenthood in the school system at that time? Um, no. They weren't uh, in okay uh, at least, time. Or at least it was more... It would it would have been more under the. But wire. we're talking about the piece of property where they. Where they yeah, so the piece of property, and you had mentioned, uh, and the uh, very next week, I think Alveda King came out. That's the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. and she was upset with it. And uh, the part about Pastor Pastor Hardy was correct about things because the very next year, um, Planned Parenthood worked with this Guttmacher Institute, and he was their actually second president after Margaret Sanger. And they have a thing, who has abortions here? And now get this here. I mean, it's just incredible. Black women are 500 times, almost 500 times more likely to have an abortion than a white woman. Isn't that something? What was the rationale by that? <laughs> what? But that statement you made. Because well, they're just showing it. They're, they're just giving the percentages the of, of the stats with it. Um, and they say Hispanic women are are uh, almost 300% more likely hmm. to abort their babies. Um, the other thing is Planned Parenthood always says, well, well no, we're, we're, we're just doing contraceptives, and it turns out that only 8% um, um, only, uh, of the women who've had abortions have never been used in birth control, so that means the other 92% are using some form of birth control mm -hmm. when they get pregnant. And I think that uh, any of your viewers out here know that they probably have named their babies. Well, that's my pill baby, or that's mm -hmm. my uh, diaphragm baby. So people know that, you know, that however people might feel about contraceptives, mm -hmm. they know that it's it's not foolproof. Hmm. So um, so Pastor Hardy called that one um, correctly. Okay. Um, the, the other one regarding the the um, the Planned Parenthood local, the, they put out a local report. This came out at the end of 2006 there. And the first thing they mentioned about the center they were going to build was um, it said the board of directors has approved plans to conduct a 12 and a half million a regional services center capital campaign to develop a 40, 45,000 square foot facility at that time it was the second largest abortion facility that Planned Parenthood had in the whole country. The one on Martin Luther King that we yes, talked about. Martin yes. Luther King Jr. Boulevard. That will include um, a medical administrative building and 
a state-of-the-art surge center designed to increase access to abortion. Yeah. So they came right out and said that, that that's that, that what their goal was to increase access to, to abortion. Now, tell me and, something. Well, as you as you were mm-hmm. discussing these issues, aspect of it, mm-hmm. where were the leading, uh, all due respect, uh, black organizations like the NAACP, the Urban League, and other folks like that here within the black community? Were they a part of this discussion? No, no. It was really sad because uh, um, some of the black pastors of some pretty small churches mm-hmm. um, like the were Alabama involved. Ministerial Alliance, were they involved? Well, so, so, yeah, yes and no. Um, you know, we we did do a presentation there, and they they did help us promote a march in 2009. Oh, they did. Okay, so yeah, they, they were they involved. Did. Yes, um, but but with the Urban League and the NAACP, unfortunately, what's happened with some organizations like that, and um, and, and I don't want to single out any no, no, black no, no, black no, no, organizations no. or things, but but I think sometimes um, they they get too involved with a political party. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, I, if I'm going to associate myself with the group, I would probably associate myself with the, with the, uh, 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 the Catholics, you know, because mm. I'm very devout. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I attend ten mass each day, and mm-hmm. um, I, the faith means a lot to me. But there's a lot of Catholics who are first and foremost Democrats, mm-hmm. and it's just not voting for a person, but. The Democrats, it's right on their platform. Anyone can go see it. Is abortion is a big part of their platform. Mm-hmm. So therefore, um, you know, even though for centuries and centuries the churches fought to defend them, this, you know, the the babies in the womb, but they're there. You know, the political party's more important. So I think that's the case with the NAACP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they recently sued someone, um, um, a, a black activist, who was trying to have the NAACP get. Involved. more more involved mm-hmm. and he used the acronym of NAACP mm-hmm. for for something about um, um, for something to show how they were for abortion I don't remember the exact okay. wording and but he did win his uh, he was a the, the lawsuit did not stick so he did win hmm. so yeah hmm. um, you know they should be involved you know I, my feeling is is that if, if, if you shoot a black ch- child when, like in Chicago, where you know President Obama comes from, there's, I think, a few murders every week, which mm-hmm. don't ever get printed, mm-hmm. which is sad. Uh, I forgot it's a few hundred a year or something like that mm-hmm. of uh, black upon black violence. Right. But you know, if a little black 12-year-old gets shot, and dies, he dies. You know, that's that's the loss of a life. If a 12-week, if a 12-week black baby, you know, gets gets um, killed in the womb. You know, you know, in a few months, uh, or, or or even twelve weeks. That's a few weeks. Excuse me, a few months in the womb, where a lot of the babies get get aborted. That's still another dead mm-hmm. black baby. Mm-hmm. And and it's worse than just the black child getting aborted. What abortion does to women is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's all sorts of groups out there. Um, a lot of the pregnancy resource centers have a group called Heart to Heart or Heart. There's also the Project Rachel and other groups that are reaching out to these women because it eventually hits these women. Yeah. You know, oh my God, what did I do? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they realize that, that, you know, that they were pressured usually by a boyfriend or sometimes the, yeah. the grandparents yeah. of the baby, but it hits them and it hits them hard. Tell and, me this, uh, uh, in that particular area aspect of it, you know, we, we've got Roe versus Wade. I've yes. read a little bit about Roe versus Wade. Mm-hmm. What would be the percentage of uh, of abortion before Roe versus Wade, as opposed to the uh, to, to after Roe versus Wade became law? Um, some of that's yeah, somewhat yeah. hard to pinpoint because of. Uh, did, did you have a higher percentage? Yeah. Of, of, well, uh, uh, Doctor Nathaniel, who actually worked for NARO, which is an abortions rights league, he used to always come up with a he he came up with a figure before him, but he said that they lied with that. Now, what you can do is look at CDC, you know, and like the year before abortion became legal throughout the country, and there was just really a, um, um, you know, not too many deaths by abortion there, so it looks like there weren't too many. I mean, they obviously did increase. Okay. okay. Things do increase, okay. but um, some people have speculated on it. I mean, Dr. Nathias at least said that they were lying mm-hmm. whichever number he came up with, which mm-hmm. I can't remember now. Um, but but since it was illegal, they didn't do it. And even now, 
depending on reporting of states, some states don't have to report mm -hmm. report abortion. Yeah, Bill, so. Bill, Bill, Bill has all this knowledge. I'm, it was sort of like I got to bring him back on this. Uh, yes. Some focus on some. I want to get back to the to the actual construction of the present. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Planned Parenthood piece. How did uh -huh. it? Uh, talk a little bit about that piece because I know the city was involved in. Oh this yeah. Way. So there's a couple things. So that second hearing in April of 2007, Pastor Hardy, in a very humble way, said, "Could could you at least delay your decision?" And Charles Wilhite um, said, you know, no, I can't do that. But it was interesting is during that year, uh, uh, Planned Parenthood's uh, builders uh, or developers, Beach, Beach Street Development, asked for um, delays and they were able to get them. So they did start building the building um, towards the end of 2008. Okay. Who was um, mayor during that time? Um, well, it just changed. At first, it was Mayor Potter. Okay. Um, and he had no trouble with, with Planned Parenthood. He had no problem. No, no, no. And we, we actually went to his office, and the, and um, his spokesperson spoke for it. And at that time, that was in 2008, went to the office. And that time, um, uh, Sam Adams was the mayor-elect. Mm -hmm. And he even told us in that, in, in that in, when we went up to him, he says, uh, no, I don't have trouble with Planned Parenthood. I like them. I even like all their abortions. Is that good enough for you? You know, he so he came, yeah, he came right on to say that. So, yeah. yeah so, um, um, yeah. So the the mayors were were well. Both mayors were um, were were much in favor of the plan Planned Parenthood. And I don't know about the newest mayor where, where he stands. You know, on on the stuff that Planned Parenthood does, whether the abortions are or promoting all that promiscuity around uh, amongst little children. You know, um, uh, at this point yeah. in time, again, I'm asking somewhat of a, yeah. a lay code of a person. Yes. The, the the whole definition of a, of a life mm. has always been the issue that comes that comes to mind yes. about abortion. Uh, why why is there such a confusion? I mean, it looked like to me, is, you know, the ones who are pro-abortion are saying that it's not a life, mm -hmm. and the ones who are against abortion mm -hmm. uh, are saying that it it is a life. Well, I know, I know you're. You I point? know you're my inner uh, interviewer, but that's not quite true. There are some people who are for abortion who say it's a life, but but that people can still kill it. Yeah, right. A right. lot of them even say it. If you go, you know, read articles uh, from the people, they said, well, yeah, it's a baby, but we have a right to kill it. So oh. some of them do say that. Others of them, you are right. They do debate. They say it's not a life. Yeah. But uh, you know, if if two human beings procreate, I mean, what are they forming? Are they forming an eggplant? Are they forming a frog? Are they forming a turtle? No, they're forming a human life. Now, if you if you go look at science books, they talk about the 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 uh, the life the the embry embryonic life the the life of the embryo. Mm -hmm. um, we have books at PCC, for example, that talk about the psychological development. Mm -hmm. So so not only is is it life, but they're talking about you know how the brain works, and which a lot of people don't know is just within. Um, in three weeks, the heart's beating. So if you use that measure, let's say you get an accident, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, they rush you to the hospital here, right? And let's say it's right by the rush to the manual here. You know, they, they put the meter on you and bless you, it's flat line, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, they, they, they give you the, the shock. I can't know the medical term for that. And, but boy, Bruce's, Bruce is, Bruce's heart's beating again. What do they say? You know, let's, let's say your wife or other people there. They said, "Thank God he's alive." Hmm. So, so you know, if a heart's beating, I, I would think someone's alive. You know, they're dependent on the mother granted, just like if I'm in an airplane, I'm dependent on the pilot. You know, there I can't step out of the plane. I'm mm -hmm. dependent. Um, you know, I'm dependent on on when I go over the St. John's Bridge a few times a week. I'm dependent on all the engineers and people who built that, that they built it correctly. Mm -hmm. So all, I, I still have a life. The baby still has life. Even um, the, the matter of having life isn't based upon if we're dependent on someone or not. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, because that's, that's <coughs> the, the crux of the mission. Maybe. Yes. I mean, we got this issue, and, we, and we're so sophisticated in our mm -hmm. society, it, but the discussion is always the pro mm -hmm. and the con type yeah. routine. Look like to me we should be, be able to come up with a definition and say, mm -hmm. yes, it is, or yes, it's not. Right. And then tell the public right off the right. bat. But that, well, and I think, I, I think you're right. Technology's uh, taking care of that. It, you know, that, um, and mothers are getting ultrasounds and getting the live ultrasounds, and, 
and and the latest thing that started this summer was Planned Parenthood um, is is harvesting organs, so mm-hmm. it has to be a human life. Mm-hmm. You're not getting you're not getting hearts and livers and eyes from from um, a blob of tissue. You know, mm-hmm. uh, a heart is a heart. Mm-hmm. You know, and they talk about uh, sometimes with a baby coming out alive. You know, those are some terms. But they, they use. disputed that. Hmm? They said no, that's not the case. Well, some of them do, some of them okay. don't. Okay. 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 Uh, I think people can watch those videos for themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what you know. Watch them for them themselves. I okay, I'm gonna good. go. I'm gonna go track back a little bit. Like okay, sure. We got so much stuff to talk yes. about anyway. But uh, when did Planned Parenthood get into the school district, Portland Public Schools? Um, I know you were still there doing. I, I was. I'm not quite sure when they came in. Um, I know it was the school year 2012, and I was told that um, a group called Teenage Outreach Program was going to be coming to recruit children for my classroom okay and when they came in which was kind of standard protocol i looked at the guy's card and it said this is at benson right this was a benson benson okay and it said planned parenthood you know i was just handing out a math quiz to the tutorial when he came in and i i was i can't even come up with the words Yeah, yeah So I at least mustered up enough courage, and I asked the fellow, I said, could you step over here, could we talk a second? And then I said, you know, I I don't feel comfortable about you being here. And then, um, you know, so then he stepped out. They went up to the office, and the principal came down, and the vice principal. And then uh, I took the rest of the day off. I just couldn't be there with it. And then I came back the next day, and then they said that Planned Parenthood would not be recruiting for just the three days. They would be recruiting all week. Um, and then Planned Parenthood brought in a manager and um, to watch everything I did. Um, and then, then the next day they brought in... Well, who authorized all this stuff, right? Plan. Did they call you up? Did they have sort of a, a, a gathering, if you will, of all the no. teachers and say, okay, fine, this, this is what we're going to be doing and this is the rationale? Right. No, no. Lesson plans, No, like I stuff. said, I only got a few days notice to say a, a group called Teenage Outreach Program. But they didn't say... It was Planned Parenthood. And, and at Benson, we had companies a lot. Now, they were involved with different programs, but when Ford would come, it was Ford. To my electronics class, electric class, we would have PGE come, and I don't know what, they were under programs that helped sponsor, yeah. but it was still what? P-G-E. P-G-E. Okay. You know, um, IEM came. Okay. Um, a fellow from Sequent came, you know, and so on. Um, and I guess the IBM was the Sequent at that time. But... Um, but I mean, I always introduce the people that way, mm-hmm. and that's the one thing they said I could not introduce the people from being from Planned Parenthood. So my thing is, if the school is so much in love, the district too, you know, because they put Planned Parenthood. If they're so yeah. much in love with Planned Parenthood, I can't think of a better word, and they are. You know, if you look at the the board, you know, the board members of of Portland Public Schools and go mm-hmm. talk to all of them, they have no trouble with that. And some of them are quite involved with Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, and it's like, okay, well then, announce it. You know, yeah, right, if you're right, for, right, do it. Right, you know, right. they, they they should be like Senator Wyden, who who went to the Planned Parenthood grand opening in Eugene. You know, I mean, obviously he's for abortion right, and everything. Right. He goes to the grand opening. You know, and you know holds or the groundbreaking or what have you. So so I mean, everyone should know that Senator Wyden's there. So the Portland Public Schools should make that clear. That's like that. So it's like, well, why should I get in trouble for announcing that we have a group from Planned Parenthood to recruit? So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, now yeah. here we're, we're in a presidential <laughs> election right now, a big-time mm-hmm. election. Yes. Like that. They've made it very, very political. Uh-huh. And they've tend to, a lot of times they tend to identify the whole issue of abortion yes. as an issue of the Republicans, that they are yeah. for, you know, uh-huh. for the right. abortion aspect of it. But on the other side, it looks like it's just the other way around. Mm-hmm. Why, why is that so? Well, what's, your take, I, what's your take about the politics of this? Well, unfortunately, if, if you... What I would tell people to do, because there's a lot of independents, they should just go look to uh, go look up uh, a NARAL, that's the Na- National Abortion Rights League, and see what imp- what politicians that they give um, rankings to, right. and a lot of them have 100% rankings. Like Jeff Merkley, you know, has 100% backing, you know, of Planned Parenthood and NARAL. So and and leave you know, I can't help. I can't. I'm not going to tell the people how to vote, but I, I want to have, have teach them how to inform themselves. So if they're Democrat, if they're Republican, if they're independent, you know, because for the na- for primaries you have to vote within your party, right, right, right. but for the national election you don't. And if if 
if, if however they feel about abortion, if they think it's the greatest thing in the world to you know be killing those little babies, mm -hmm. well, again, they should go look. For the other people who who maybe don't think abortion is that great of a deal, they should go look at their employees. And I, I guess this I'm saying to my, a lot of my fellow um, uh, uh, people or Catholics who who will vote for a Democrat no matter what, they should go look to see where Senator. Merkley uh, mm -hmm. is and where Senator Wyden is and mm -hmm. our different representatives mm -hmm. and see their ranking on on from Planned Parenthood and, and NARO. Wow. And they should also look at the party platforms. Wow. Okay. Wow. And um, uh, it's not hard that they're on the web. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least that way they're making an informed right, decision. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, that, this, yeah. I think this is a prime time to be able to do that. Yes. Because yes. we've got a presidential uh -huh. election coming mm -hmm. up, and that's why we're discussing the issue now. Mm -hmm. Maybe we might be able to get uh, some. Well, sense and, and unfortunately, we and it might change in 20 years. Right, Who knows? Right. But unfortunately, now, I mean, it does turn out that most of the Democrats are for everything to do with abortion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and uh, the, a lot of the Republicans aren't, mm -hmm. you know. And like mm -hmm. I said, that could change in 20 years. Right, right, right. Um, it turns out that two of the big Democrats have gotten the highest award from Planned Parenthood, yeah. that they're most like, um, you know, Margaret Sanger. Mm -hmm. And people can go read Margaret Sanger to see what she was like. So, And Margaret Sanger is, she uh, was the founder? Of Planned Parenthood. She was very much into all this free sex. Uh, she wrote to her little grand daughter that she should have sex a little 16 year old she said she should have sex three times a day and that's all on youtube uh, I yeah oh yes i saw it too. and then uh, i checked it out myself. and then the uh and then she was very much into race control she said more of the fit more of the unfit um you know she worked with the the head of uh, procter and gamble at that time to try to this program to kind of uh, at that time reduce the negro race mm -hmm. you know just like now we have rich people like um Bill Gates, who's spending millions and billions, maybe trying to contracept and abort the Africans out of existence, you know. And so I don't know what it is with those rich people. Yeah. Buffett's the same way. Gee. Buffett has given hundreds of millions to the abortion industry. But instead of those people saying, you know, um, God's been good to me, you know, he's, you know, he's made my businesses good, you know, maybe I should go help people, like maybe build water treatment plants instead of trying to kill kill the poor people so I, I don't understand that bill tell me something mm. you think if we mm. were to let's say talk to the whole history of history of planned parent do you mm. think something like that would be of value to put it into school system oh i think it would be yes then it would just yeah. kind of throw it out on the table right, aspect right. of it and let people uh, yeah i mean they, they show lobby. other embarrassing things you know they show how george washington wasn't maybe stellar all his life mm -hmm. or how lincoln mm -hmm. wasn't stellar mm -hmm. or kennedy mm -hmm. or what have you mm -hmm. or roosevelt mm -hmm. yeah they should point out with with, I, I think it would be good to have the history of. of now, Planned let me ask yes, you a right. question. Now, you're not anti the health issue of a woman to begin with, right? Well, it, de it depends what they call health. health. I mean, okay. sometimes they call abortion health, and that's okay. not what that's it's what I'm health. saying. So, yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. as opposed to the abortion aspect. Well, the, the one thing Planned Parenthood kept saying in the last few years when more of their atrocities keep coming up, right? Mm -hmm. They said that they give mammograms, okay? Well, it turns out they don't give mammograms. I mean, Cecil Richards finally testified they don't have a mammogram machine, hmm. okay? And and it turns out that that many many more women in the whole country, uh, you know, get get cancer screenings at other places mm -hmm. than Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. You know, the last thing I want to um, do, I want to. Uh, uh, well, we and just going. to show you where Planned Parenthood is, well, is that okay. um, the uh, ninety some percent of the pregnant woman who come to Planned Parenthood, because that's reproduction, if you're pregnant, mm -hmm. get abortions. So, I mean, that is the big part wow. of their business. So, um, so if you're a pregnant woman, that's probably not a place you should be going. So, wow. yes, I am all for pregnant women getting good health for themselves and for their, their little baby, those nine months in the mm -hmm. womb. Mm -hmm. but, um, but Planned Parenthood, again, if you look at the pregnant women who use... Planned Parenthood service, 90% of them have their babies aborted by Planned Parenthood. Uh, so. You know, I want to throw another mm -hmm. little piece out. I, I know I'd, I'd, uh, I'd say we was going to try to take a break, but I think I, I've got a few more things that you okay. need to talk about. Sure. We're, going to spend, we're going to go on and spend the time, okay. and I'll just have my next guest where we'll have an opportunity to talk okay. about that part. But, you know, recently you did a, and I, I just happened to have been there because yes. I wanted to be there. Finally. You recently did a, a little protest march in the, in the front of Planned uh, on Parenthood. August 22nd, on August 22nd. August yes. 27th yes. of this year. Right? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, and it was kind of interesting uh, when I when I was there. Yes. I, I saw. I noticed that um, uh, 90, 99.5, Nine percent of the people were white, yes. and only this less than one percent was mm -hmm. was black. Mm -hmm. I probably was that person. Well, there was a few. 
Well, I, but I'm just, I, didn't, I didn't notice them doing anything. And I, I guess the other thing that I enjoyed, I, it gave me the opportunity to walk up to the door mm -hmm. of Planned Parenthood, you know, as a as a taxpayer. And right. It was just my right, right? That's Because right. I'm, I'm donating monies. Yes. And said, gee, I'd just like to have a packet, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the, the woman who came up to the door said, well, I'm an idiot. And then, uh -huh. no, and I'll call the cops. And I say, well, call them. Uh -huh. I had my, I had uh -huh. my, my hat on, my uh -huh. Vietnam that I'd served right. because, uh, for the rights of people and whatever, right. and and totally ignored that aspect. Mm -hmm. of it. There was no thanks for mm -hmm. serving and this, that, and the other. It was right. just a, it was a very negative uh -huh. kind of a situation. Yes. And I noticed that the media didn't want to show up at the time. No, no, we not, called they, them. Yeah, well, I, it was me. Yeah. I, I called them. I personally, Did you? I personally called yeah. them and said, hey, this is news. Well, well, they're not going to do that. Yeah. Well, what, what's, what's the uh -huh. deal here? Well, I, it is news. They, they've, no, they've done polls of the people over and over again who run the media, and most of them are for that, the, that kind of kinky promiscuity that Planned Parenthood pushes, and they're for abortion. So they're not going to promote the other stuff. Even though people think they're getting unbiased news, they're not. Do you think? And, it's, and, it's, and in fact, if we go back to 2007 when Pastor Childress came out here from the plat. Black Genocide Awareness Project, we had around 140, 150 people there. I forgot what news station it was, but they said there was a half a dozen people. You know what I mean? Well, there was over 200 people. Oh, there, there was probably day. a few hundred. Well, so, so they can't go to that. I mean, it's the same thing as when Pope John Paul II went to Poland. Mm -hmm. and that's when it was still under communist control. The cameras tried to film, and there's hundreds of thousands of people there. But the the, the communist government, which was running the the press now, and yeah. for all practical purposes, yeah. Planned plan Parenthood runs the press. I mean, how many of these news stories have you heard about them selling body parts mm -hmm. or of all these other live action videos? No, the press isn't going to print that. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you can go to the press here in town for most of them, not all of them, and certainly the national level, you know, and see where they stand. Do you remember a few years ago, Dan Rather was trying to do that thing to get Bush out. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah. so it's, it's very clear where they stand. And obviously it's a free country. They can do that. But again, people think that, you know, that, you know, the guy who comes on CBS or ABC is, you know, he's just middle of the road American and they're not. But, you know, you know it, 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 the feel, again, the feeling that I get out of this situation, <clears throat> too, long, it's kind of like saying, say, the person said, as long as it ain't me, mm -hmm. I, I'm here and, yes. and I'll abort this child, uh -huh. if you will. Who could be another another human being like yes. the person is? Mm -hmm. But but some, some we, we've been we've been I, I don't know what it is. What, what well, to well, in all fairness well, to the mother, in those cases, in most cases, she is really pressured. I know, you know that's what, what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it really Maybe isn't. It is really no, isn't. Not just her. It really isn't pro-choice. No, she's no. usually pressured by her friends. Yeah, yeah. She's pressured by her family. Yeah. She's pressured by the boy, and then she's mm -hmm. been brought up in the school system and on mm -hmm. press mm -hmm. that abortion's no big deal. You're in and out of there mm -hmm. in a few minutes, and Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. says, "Hey, it's like having a heavy period," mm -hmm. and but it isn't. In fact. What I would like people to do is to go to MLK mm -hmm. um, in the afternoons and see these people come out. They usually come out in sweats because that's what they tell them to wear. And just to see the look on those faces or, or just go a few blocks over to Emanuel Hospital or go over to Providence and see when a lady comes out with a baby you know, mm -hmm. that she's just delivered. And the difference between those two ladies. Well, I, think that, I mean, that's that's a huge yeah, difference I think that right suggestion there. about uh -huh. being there. Why, why can't you just walk in and, and just ask for a packet and mm -hmm. or whatever? You know, I, well, you should have been able to do that. But you they, know. Would, they wouldn't let me in there. No, no, I, I'm, and I'm not sure why. And I, so. and I did notice that uh -huh. they did call the cops, if you will. Uh -huh, they to, did. To, to, to be, and then yes. they, had to, they basically had to talk to you. What, they what, did. What, what was that conversation? Um... You know, what, what, what's the conversation? Uh, There's a lot going on that day, but they did talk with me. Um, they just wanted to make sure that the sidewalk was clear. And every so often with a lot of people, people get close. And I said, okay, we'll make sure it's clear. And um, I forgot what the other question he asked was. Okay. But he, but, yeah. he didn't say anything about it. he would arrest you otherwise? No, no, no. Uh-uh. So... What did happen on that one? I mean, uh, generally, police have been just very helpful. But back in 2007, we were protesting once a few people came in a truck and threw something at us, and mm -hmm. it hit a tree, mm -hmm. you know, and didn't hit us. So then they stopped the car, and one of them came out and pulled his pants down and started to, uh, to masturbate. Wow. wow. And so we called the police, and someone else called the police. So the police came pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But then, but then... I got put in the police car, and then they put the three people like a block away. And by that time, it was getting around dusk, and I yeah. couldn't make them yeah. out, you know, wow. to 
to see which was the one who was masturbating in front oh, of us there wow. but um yeah so. well, then the other thing i, I and, and that i reported to the newspaper and, and they were going of news. course they reported yeah, no yeah, yeah, and yeah. and i called the some of those news stations that day and they knew a few hundred people were down there that day mm -hmm. but they weren't going to go to that because yeah, it will look like to say hey you know maybe maybe there's people in the country who don't believe what the general media believe that maybe there are there can be two opinions mm -hmm. about abortion well you, you know the maybe other there can be two uh, opinions uh, about all that Graphical sex that Planned Parenthood. You know, the other thing that, uh -huh. I, that I, I saw and noticed in, in that uh -huh. whole that whole that situation with reference to this uh -huh. this demonstration piece aspect of it, if you were just just going through the neighborhood, if you mm -hmm. will, it didn't look like a quote as one identifies the black neighborhood. It was just all white folks, no uh -huh. respect, and then they had all the the so-called a number of the employees. Yes. That were lined were up in white. the front. They were yeah. all white too. Yes. So I, if you were just a lay person, would say, "Well, gee, was they all just being?" Well, like, in the in the year two thousand, the King neighborhood was around forty. You got about a minute now. Okay. Go on. In the in the year two thousand, the census, the King neighborhood, which is where that their abortion centers in, um, um, uh, it was forty four percent black but right. it's certainly them demographics have changed a lot oh, since very then. much so i mean yes i yes, mean there's yeah. a whole issue of, uh, uh -huh. of gentrification now well there, there was one lady who came who, um when they were building that she goes well really the joke's on planned parenthood because mm -hmm. she knew why they were there mm -hmm. um because people who have studied where planned parenthoods are you know they do put them in hispanic and black mm -hmm. neighborhoods she goes mm -hmm. she says the joke's on them there's not as many but, see, but a lot of folks now. don't know that you know no, they don't the hispanic community or the black community really no. really don't know no. that in fact that they are aborting black Mo kids and, and more kids yeah you know five I mean? five hundred percent you know, more well, this is just a whole yeah this is just white folks business if you yeah, it is you yeah. got me yeah but it's not the case and that's no. why i would that's why i'm doing this show now it today. is yeah and, and we just need to educate and, and there's more that and i would encourage the viewers to get a hold of mafia 21 mafia 21 what it, is that? it's a good What's dvd that? that shows the history okay. of planned parenting especially about um and 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 how and how they a lot of the abortions and practices are really racist yeah. in general. Yeah, so. You know, we could spend another two or three hours on this piece, yes. you know what I mean? But we're at uh, this point in time, what we'll do is that right. we'll just go on and say thank you very much for being well, here Well, thank today. you, too. This is a start, you know, in right. terms of educating the folks. Uh, and, I'd invite, and I do, and tell them to inform themselves. I'll, so I'll this invite point, Planned Parenthood to come yes. in and, and I.E. Uh, contradict what you're saying. Is that fair? Okay. Yes. Okay. Have you right here with them. All right. Thanks All right. very much. God bless you and everyone else out there. Okay, God bless me. Folks, there you have it. Okay, good. Check me on the next time around i will have some other individuals talking about this issue have a good one take care i'll see you next time take care yeah.